All right, this is Woodman here. So today I want to talk to you about a dangerous entity known as Asmodeus. This entity may try to lure you to become one of his followers. If you accept, you will live a life plagued with sex addictions. He is a huge distraction to us and our life purpose. He is cunning, charismatic, as well as charming. And also, as I said, very dangerous. In a previous video, I mentioned to you how as a child, I used to play a role-playing game known as Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. He's mentioned in a book of this game known as the Monster Manual, which described him as a devil lord who reigned over the ninth layer of hell. He was extremely powerful and not a devil to be fought against. Asmodeus is a powerful devil or demon, often depicted in mythology as a figure with reddish skin, sharp horns, a long forked tail. He has this air of intimidation and malice with perking eyes that strike fear into those who behold him. He possesses immense strength and cunning, capable of manipulating both mortals and other infernal beings to serve his dark, nefarious purposes. Asmodeus' powers are vast and varied, and they range from outright manipulation, um, fire, darkness, the ability to corrupt souls, sow discord among humanity. He's often associated with temptation, particularly in the realms of sex and lust, where he delights in exploiting human weaknesses and their desires. As the ruler of the Nine Hells, Asmodeus commands legions of demons and devils, enforcing order through fear and manipulation. According to some mythologies, Asmodeus was originally an angel who fell from grace due to his pride and rebellion against divine authority. In his bid for power, he was cast out of heaven and condemned to rule over the lower infernal realms. His principality lies in the domain of manipulation, trickery, temptation, and deception, where he seeks to undermine goodness at every turn and purity every chance he gets. Asmodeus is often associated with a biblical book known as the Book of Tobit, where he appears as a demon who plagued Sarah, the daughter of Ragwell, with a series of tragic marriages. His name also appears in other ancient texts and mythologies, including Jewish texts, Christian texts, as well as Islamic folklore, where he is depicted as a malevolent force which is always opposed to divine order and righteousness. Spiritually, individuals who are aware and who are awake and who know we're in a matrix-like environment and all the things that are going on in this environment would really do well to steer clear of Asmodeus and his influence as he will seek to divert them from their spiritual path and lead them astray with temptation and sin. Practitioners must cultivate discernment and strength of will to resist his allure and stay true to their higher purpose. Asmodeus represents the shadow side of human nature and confronting him requires courage, integrity, and a steadfast commitment to spiritual growth and enlightenment. Our sacral chakra, which is also known as the Vatistana, is one of the seven main energy centers in the body, according to Hindu and yogic traditions. Although there are going to be some people who disagree about that, that there are more than just seven, but that's another story, another message. It's located in the lower abdomen, just below the navel, and is associated with emotions, creativity, pleasure, and sexuality. When this, sh this chakra is balanced and open, it allows for the free flow of energy, fostering feelings of passion, intimacy, creativity, joy. But when it is blocked or imbalanced, it can manifest issues with intimacy, emotional instability, and excessive or even repressed sexuality. Sex and lust are often connected to the sacral chakra because this energy center governs our desires our pleasures, including those related to sexual experiences and intimate connections. When this chakra is excessively stimulated 
or manipulated, it can lead to an overemphasis on physical desires and hedonistic pursuits, often at the expense of spiritual growth and emotional fulfillment. A devil entity like Asmodeus would seek to bind to the sacral chakra of spiritually enlightened individuals in order to siphon their energy and corrupt their spiritual path. Asmodeus, again, as I've mentioned previously, is associated with temptation and seduction, particularly in the realm of sex and lust. And so this would prevent a person from having meaningful bonds and loving relationships by diverting the person to just focus more on sexuality, to manipulate desires, to lead them astray, and to lead them down a path where you are engaged in excess, and this excess creates an imbalance that your life falls apart after some time. Asmodeus might t attempt to influence individuals through various means, such as whispering seductive thoughts, creating illusions of pleasure and gratification, tempting people, getting people stimulated and horny, right? He would exploit vulnerabilities or unresolved emotional issues related to sexuality, enticing individuals with promises of reward, fulfillment, power in exchange for their spiritual integrity. In other words, while what he says at first may sound all well and good, it never quite works out. And so to guard against Asmodeus' influences, one must be able to cultivate awareness and balance their chakra and keep those chakra clear and well protected. Meditation, yoga, and energy healing may help to cleanse and align the chakras. Developing discernment and self-awareness is also crucial in recognizing and resisting Asmodeus' temptations um, and any other entities like Asmodeus which would try to mislead individuals. And you, these individuals would want to remain on their spiritual path to remain as a figure of integrity and not fall prey to these games, to these distractions, because ultimately at the end of it all, we are all here to accomplish certain goals and purposes. Now I'm not telling you that all of a sudden uh, a, a man like the one in the image here is going to materialize right in front of you and is going to you know, wave his hands and a magic spell is gonna happen and a portal is going to open I'm not talking about that. Remember that when we talk about life and this matrix-like environment we live in, the matrix isn't going to be obvious, right? The matrix is something that it, for all intents and purposes, looks like a normal, regular life. Like, in other words, we're taught things, like we're taught science. You know, objects fall to the earth at 9.8 meters per second squared, right? And that's supposed to be a, a condition that holds true for any object. So, when scientists are able to discover this, you know, Newton, I believe, was the one who uh, discovered a lot of the rules of classical phys physics, right? These rules are going to hold true. So if you jump off the top of a building, you're going to reach terminal velocity, you're going to hit the ground, and you're going to die. So let's not try to go into uh, some sort of adventure in fantasy land where we think we can defy the rules of reality. But what I am saying is, is that there are also aspects of the matrix-like world we live in that are more than just the rules of reality, that are more than just hard science, that are more than just, oh, I haven't seen God, so God must not exist, right? I get it. If you want to be an atheist, go well, go where? Go ahead, be an atheist. If you want to be an agnostic, go ahead and be an agnostic. I'm not going to tell you what you should be as a believer, although I recommend that you do believe in God and that you understand that God is the divine high form that is behind all of this. I recommend it, but that is for you to decide as a spiritual person and believer. But just because we are ignorant of things that we don't believe are around us doesn't mean that we can't be affected by those things and that we can't succumb to those things. In other words, if I sit here in this room and I say voodoo is mumbo jumbo, and I say witchcraft is not real, and I say all these things are impossible, and even if they were real, I don't believe in them, so I, they have no power over me. That's not how that works. I'm just here to tell you. You can disagree with me. You can tell me, you know what, Woody, you're crazy. No way. But I'm here to tell you whether you believe in these things or not, they are real and they are going on, and you're not going to be able to see them 
but you will be able to experience them and you won't understand why your life is going a certain way because these things are not obvious it's like there's a whole other universe that is invisible and around us and that is part of our existence as well that we can't see that we can't understand but that just because we don't read up on it or learn about it and we think it's impossible doesn't mean it's not there and it's not happening and so that's why i bring up a discussion of asmodeus because there are many of us who probably have fallen prey to asmodeus and don't even realize that that's what's happening he is around us and i'm sure right now anyone who is a devout follower of him anyone who does his bidding as well as him the entity itself are all sitting here screaming at this video saying shut up shut up they don't want you to know about these things because ignorance is what gives them more and more power over us the fact that we are ignorant the fact that we are blind the fact that we are kept in the dark they're able to do their work without being interrupted when you know and you understand and then you are able to train your mind to fight against these things that's what gives you power that's what gives you the ability to reclaim your life and live the life you want not the life that's being mysteriously affected by these entities beyond our realm of understanding in other words it's happening it's real if you ever wonder you might say well you know what it's just dumb luck it's just you no know, woody you're crazy it, it, there, there's no you know malevolent entity out there that's doing things to me well you can keep on thinking that but i'm here to tell you that if you start to get it you start to realize what's going on the game that's around us and there's so much i don't know i'm not going to sit here and tell you i'm an expert i'm not i'm learning every day i'm reading i'm going through the internet i'm using ai i'm using you know whatever is out there in terms of knowledge imagine the world is a huge library you know we had a huge collection of books to begin with going back to the 60s and the 70s right but now we're moving into the digital age and so in the digital age a lot of these things are being converted over to digital form right we have terabytes and terabytes of data out there on the web in the cloud in lots of storage media that contains vast stores of knowledge and there are books we can still buy whether either we buy a, a, a book on kindle or we buy a physical hardbound book there's so much knowledge out there that we don't take the time to read that we don't take the time to educate ourselves about but these things are still going on and i recommend you do the research don't take it from me look into it research it you will eventually come upon the truth that's why i'm here on this planet is that part of my life's purpose is to share knowledge with others when i'm not doing that i'm not living in my life's purpose so i make these videos and it doesn't really matter if i don't get a single like or a single view i would hope that i would i you know i guess a part of my ego might get stroked by that but that's not why i'm doing these messages i'm doing these messages because i have received messages from the universe telling me that this is something i must do and messages from the universe aren't obvious no there's no magical figure of light that appeared in front of me and says woody this is what i need you to do that's not how it works but the thing about the universe is it's very clever and it's very subtle and what you're going to find is is that i don't know if you've ever heard the expression the signs are everywhere there is something to that when you start to look at patterns in the universe you start to realize there are strange coincidences that happen that are very hard to explain and so at first you might just dismiss it as dumb luck and yes a lot of people particularly mathematicians and statisticians are going to tell you well based on the rule of probabilities there's a, a strong chance that this dumb luck did manifest and it created something that made you think there was a pattern but that the pattern really doesn't exist that's for you to decide for me i have seen these patterns again and again literally i could be looking at a computer screen watching a video and then i start to think of a thought and i say it out loud and the person in the video repeats exactly what i said word for word and it's strange you know because it sometimes it's a non sequitur 
And by non sequitur, that means something that does not follow. In other words, the speaker of the video may have been talking about something completely different. And my thought is something completely random, unrelated to the video, and I say it out loud, and the speaker repeats it. And I'm like, that is highly bizarre. That's because the universe wanted to get my attention. The universe wanted to let me know that, yes, this universe is actually very intelligent. It is a divine force, and it is, like, in a way that we are working through this matrix-like environment, that we all have a purpose, that we all have things we have to do, that we're not just here to be life forms that live and die, and then you move on. There's a way more going on behind the scenes. And so I have been awakened. And in being awakened, I know some of the things that I've been charged with. Supposedly, as it, the story goes, before we incarnate to this planet, we have a discussion with the divine. And we map out, I'm not going to say every single event or action that takes place, but we map out a general roadmap of what we want to be able to accomplish and what we want to do. And so as crazy as some of these things are that we go through in life, we chose it. We chose it because in the ethers, our spirits are not as narrow-minded as we are, right? Because, you know, we'll say something like, well, damn, you know, last week I broke my leg. Why would I ever choose that? Your spirit wanted to go through that experience. You yourself as a human being are like, it's painful and I don't like it and I don't want it to ever happen. And I think it's idiotic that anyone would ever choose that. I don't know what to tell you, you know? The, to the spirit, these experiences are very neutral. Think of it as almost like a movie, right? If you were watching a movie and all of a sudden the movie presented to you a very boring and bland life where, yeah, some things happened, you know, maybe some parties, and, you know, a person had a job, and then they had kids and grandkids. But by and large, there are no critical events that create any tension, that involve any sort of disputes. You know, that the, the person lives a pretty... You would say, that's a pretty boring movie, right? You would say, I, I need some action. You know, can somebody come in? Maybe someone's trying to kill somebody. Maybe um, there's a secret conspiracy, you know? This is the stuff that entertains. And so, believe it or not, for whatever reason, our spirits want to go through these experiences, as crazy as it might be. Maybe, you you know, you incarnate to the planet and you say, you know what? I'd like to know what it's like to fall from a 110-story building. Crazy as it sounds, it happens. You go through it, and then it's part of your arsenal of things that you have been through and experienced and that you can comprehend and understand. As crazy as it sounds, I want you to just think about this, not on the level of you being this human being in this form, but just in the ultimate form, a spirit out in the ethers that just looks at experiences from a very neutral standpoint and doesn't necessarily uh, uh, want to have, like, because, you know, because each of us, if we did it from our human um, um, comprehension, we'd all say, you know, I want to have $60 billion and I want to have you know, parties up the yin-yang, and I want to travel around the world, and I want to have absolutely no limitations, be able to do what I want, and have fun all day long, and that will get boring and tired after a while. I would love to have it myself. I'm not sitting here telling you I don't want those things, but I'm just here to say that there are limits because we set those limits. We set those limits because it is part of the struggle. It is part of the life story. You know, in other words, if you didn't have something to go through, then what, what exactly would you be achieving as goals and objectives, right? So that's, that's what this is all about. So I do um, want to repeat that Asmodeus is an entity that's out there. Asmodeus is an entity that wants to take us off our life's path and our life's purpose. So if you feel yourself going down this road, particularly if you start to develop a sex addiction, there's a great, very good chance that either Asmodeus or one of his followers is behind it. I hope you found this video educational and informative. Uh, please continue to like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate your support of this channel. I love you. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care.